Hey everyone, how are we doing today? So this here is a video I've been meaning to make for a really long time. Today's video, we're tackling the topic of mistakes. But I really wanted to focus on mistakes that I think are particularly damaging if you are uh, trying to run a creative business or you're just trying to, to establish something as a creative individual. And they're all damaging in their own way and they can stop you from actually being able to advance your career forward and become successful. I am guilty of doing most of these mistakes, uh, actually all of these mistakes at some point in my life and they have all been damaging. So I'm going to go over a list of these suggestions and these things that I think are really important to keep in mind if you're trying to uh, be successful in a creative industry. Learn, make, repeat, write, shoot, edit, repeat. Just do your best to make the best art you can, learn from the past and learn from your mistakes, and then move forward. This sounds really basic and sounds really simple, but you have no idea how many people I encounter that still struggle with this concept where they actually need to go out and they need to practice their art to be successful. We creative people can be a little bit ambitious at times, but it's really important that you don't just bite off more than you can chew. I know it's really exciting and you have all these different ideas and, and you think that you're the person to tell the story, but listen, if you're just beginning, if you're not ready to actually complete that project, you owe it to yourself and you owe it to the project to just shelf it for a little bit. Wait and develop your skills first before you go out and just try and tackle that ambitious project. If you're just starting out and you recently bought a camera or if you've never made a film before, don't try to make a feature film or even a short film. Look at something really small, really easy to manage. Something like a micro film, something that is completely doable to do in a couple hours. This means small projects, very easy to manage. Things that you can do over and over and over again. Maybe some, some good exercises and you're able to apply specific techniques that you're wanting to work out. Maybe all about audio or maybe all about composition and framing. You wanna specifically master individual skills before you go out and uh, try and, and make a huge feature film. Repeatedly move that muscle until you actually master that skill. And you have so much more fun doing that. You see results much more quickly and you learn, you grow much faster. If you work on like 10, 20 micro films, rather than spending that same amount of time and energy working on one or two really big projects. Don't skip steps, don't be too ambitious, and don't do too much too soon. Otherwise, you're gonna crash and burn and you won't be able to execute those projects properly. If you do something often enough, you're gonna get good at it. But if you're making the same mistake over and over and over again, well, you're not going to actually improve. Practice makes perfect, yes, but only perfect practice makes perfect. This is a problem that I've seen a lot of people do where they actually just go out and they make something and it doesn't quite turn out as they expect. So then they go out and they make it again and they try making another film and they try making another film, but they're not actually actively educating themselves. They're just making the same mistakes over and over and over again because they're not actually taking the time and investing in themselves to learn. You don't pass a test by taking the test over and over and over again. There needs to be a balance 50-50 of learning your skills as well as practicing your skills. If you go out of your way and you study the vocabulary and you study all of the techniques and and all of these different practices that you really want to apply to your films, but you only make a film like once every few years, then you're not actually going to improve and get better at it. You cannot expect that others are going to invest in you until you invest in yourself. To invest in yourself properly, you're going to need to invest a lot of your time and money and energy into this art. I see a lot of people who want to be successful filmmakers, but they haven't invested in a solid lighting kit or they haven't invested in their education. They might be still using their cell phones and they might say, hey, whoa, whoa, I don't have the money. I don't have the resources. But then I see them buying nice brand new clothes every single day or going out and buying a nice car or living in a really amazing apartment. And that's fine. That's your choice. You can do that if you want. There's no one forcing you to go out and invest in uh, thousands of dollars worth of camera gear or uh, have to sacrifice living in a smaller and more cramped apartment. But don't blame your lack of success on your lack of resources because you know what the choices that you make the decisions that you make in your life lead to the resources that you have the first year that i was a freelance videographer i was still living in my parents basement on weekends i was working as a nighttime custodian at an old folks home so i could pay off my debt and so that i could actually invest in my career i was driving in a car that cost 800 dollars. it was rusty it was really loud because the muffler fell off whenever it would rain the trunk would leak and it smelled really bad and moldy in there this is not a nice car but that was the decision that was the sacrifice i was willing to make because 
I wanted to invest in my career. I wanted to invest in my equipment because me being a filmmaker and me being able to tell the stories and me being able to, to scratch that creative itch that I really need to do is worth it. If you've invested in yourself and you have a skill set and you're really good at your art, you don't need to hunt down opportunities and you don't need to hunt down finances to complete the creative ambitions that you have. Those opportunities come running at your doorstep because they know that you have a skill set that no one else has. Or you have a style, an aesthetic, something that you can offer them that no one else can. If you can do that, you will be successful. And the only way to do that is by investing in yourself and developing your skills. And that takes time, that takes energy, it takes patience. Uh, which ties into the next trap, the next mistake that I see a lot of people making. The next mistake I see a lot of people making is that they expect results too soon. They put all of their energy and they put all of their practice and their skills and they expect those opportunities, they expect those finances, they expect so much to come running at their door and then they wait. and nothing shows up. Here's the thing about these opportunities. They come at the least expected time. So yes, always stand ready for those opportunities. Always be ready to say yes. But the way that those opportunities come is by continuing to make art. If you're not doing anything and you're not actively pursuing your creative craft, well, you know what? No one is really going to come. And the worst thing that you can do is wait around and become stagnant and not grow and advance in your skill set or advance uh, in your creative endeavors while just hoping or waiting for these opportunities to arise. I mean, for goodness sake, that's why I'm here on YouTube. Before this, I had a nice job working at a university. I was also teaching a lot of students my skill set, and I was teaching them all about filmmaking and creativity. I was in charge of a big studio with a lot of different resources. It was a really great opportunity, and I had a lot of fun at that job. A pandemic happened, and those resources vanished, and I lost my job there. All of these ambitious projects that I wanted to do, all of these things that I was really excited about, I had to mourn. I had to realize that I'm not going to be able to do those things. That job was so important to me. That job was something that I was so invested in. That job was how I was able to feed myself. And for several weeks after losing that job, I was really depressed. But I didn't just stop there. I didn't just wait for another opportunity to come or for them to hire me back. I actively decided that I was going to get back on my horse and start making art again for myself and for this channel, for you guys, and start investing my time and energy into building something that could be potentially bigger than any other project that I was doing for that university. And I've yet to see the results from that, but I'm not just waiting around hoping that another opportunity will come to me. I'm actively doing something that will lead to success. Another mistake that I see a lot of people making is they get so caught up and so tied into wanting to be successful in one particular thing. They have one particular goal that they really want to achieve that they don't actually see all these other opportunities or they're not actually thankful for all these other blessings that they've had in their life that were all great and wonderful opportunities. They don't actually see those things because their one goal, the one thing that they wanted didn't really happen. Life is a lot like darts. Everyone has a target, everyone has a goal, everyone has something that they want to achieve. Getting your dart right in the center of the target. So they aim for the bullseye and they do everything they can to try and get in that bullseye, that middle point. And you know what? The bullseye is really nice. It's worth a lot of points. But if you look at a dartboard and you actually see what's on there, there are a lot of things that you can hit that are worth a lot more than just a bullseye. In darts, a bullseye is only worth 50 points. But a triple 20, a triple 18, a triple 19, a triple 17, all of those things are worth more than the bullseye. So yeah, in life, go ahead, aim for the bullseye, aim for the thing that looks really impressive. But accept the fact that there are a lot of other things in life that might be better. There are all these other opportunities, all these other things that are worth more, that are actually better than what you want. So if those opportunities or those things that you're really excited for don't come, don't be sad. I've seen it time and time again where I've offered people opportunities and they say no. Even though I know that this opportunity is worth a lot and that it's going to be really beneficial for them, 
they don't take it because they're so caught up in their big dream, in their big opportunity, making a feature film or working with a big crew in Hollywood. So then they don't take opportunities and they don't say yes to things that are also really good. Things like filming weddings or uh, working for churches or schools. These are things that on the surface might not seem that great. They're not as glamorous. They're not the bullseye, but they're still really good. They're still wonderful things that you can still be successful at and be happy with. Another mistake that I made was thinking that I could do this job on my own, thinking that I could actually make movies and find clients and, and run a business without anyone's help. You need to know a lot of different people, a lot of people that can help you out as an artist or as a creative person. All these opportunities, all these jobs, all of these things that I've been able to do in the past have only been because of my connections with other people, because I'm serving other people. I'm helping other people out to make something. Because I live in this really small and not really populated area, a lot of people have asked me, hey, have you ever considered moving out to Montreal? Or have you considered moving out to Los Angeles, some other bigger city where there are more opportunities or there's, there's more things? And my response to them is not really. I would never just go and live in another city unless I actually knew the people that were living there or if I had some kind of connection, if I had some kind of lead or some sort of a, a help. The only way I'd be able to actually make it, the only way that I'd actually be able to get jobs and opportunities and be able to have the same success that I've had over here is if I actually go out and meet other people, go out and, and interact with others and really network and let other people know and other people see what kind of skill set I have. Because in this industry and pretty much any industry, it's not about what you know or the skill set that you have, as important as those things are, it's who you know. If you know the right people who can help you and advance your career forward, then you are in a really good place to actually be able to grow and advance and become successful in your creative industry. If you're someone who's really easy to work with and you're a nice person who has a lot of integrity and just gets along well with everyone. Well, you are going to be well suited in your creative endeavors. You are going to be someone who is going to have a lot of opportunities because people don't wanna hire a jerk. Being a jerk, don't do that. It doesn't work. You're not actually going to be successful if you are a difficult person to work with. You're not going to have a lot of job opportunities and you're not going to be able to advance yourself in your career forward if people don't want to hire you because no one likes working with a selfish and the last mistake on this list is the lack of commitment I see in artists. If you want to make it as an artist, you have to commit. Anyone that has gotten anywhere in life didn't give up. They didn't quit. This is not the first YouTube channel that I have done. I've done three YouTube channels in total. I've invested time, energy, and money into this platform multiple times in my life. And when I saw that the views were not going up and my subscribers were going down, and I saw that I wasn't actually growing or, or advancing at the same rate that I wanted to be advancing or, or at the same rate that I was hoping I would go at, I didn't change my strategy and I didn't do anything. I didn't continue grinding and I didn't pursue that dream. I said, that didn't work. I guess I failed at it and I moved on. In reality, I didn't fail at those YouTube channels. Even if they didn't go anywhere, I quit those YouTube channels. There's a big difference. Don't mistake these two terms together and don't say, I failed at my filmmaking career. I failed at making movies. Don't say that because it's wrong. It's not true. What you did is you didn't pursue it long enough. If you look at anything in this world that has actually been a success, the only reason that they're successful is because they didn't quit. And I see too many people who are just aspiring to be filmmakers, too many people who are aspiring to be creative people, too many aspiring YouTubers who, when it gets tough or when they get discouraged, they just abandon it. But the only way of actually being successful at anything is by doing it long enough until you actually see results. Anyway guys, that's it for this week's video, uh, but be sure to take a look in the comments down below because I'm sure everyone is going to be posting their suggestions or things that they think are really important if you are running a creative business or just trying to be able to make it as an artist in this creative field. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, ring that notification bell so you're getting those notifications, you know, do all that jazz. And I will see you next time. Take care.
Subscribe if you haven't already. Ring that notification bell so you're getting a little... I'm talking way too fast, way too fast. And we got a... Anyway, guys. Subscribe. And now I'm shooting. Should I be scared of how close the camera is to this dartboard? It's probably fine. Yes! Also, uh, it's my birthday, so uh, if you want to send me presents, uh, go ahead.